All right, hello everyone and welcome to today's meetup. Uh, my name is Dalia and I'm from Elastic's community team. Today we're going to hear from Milos about snapshot lifecycle management. Um, this meetup will be recorded and uploaded, uploaded to the Elastic YouTube channel, so you can watch it afterwards again there. Um, and we're always looking for speakers, so if you would like to speak at one of our meetups, uh, you can always let us know. Uh, so please, Milos, take away from here. Thanks, Dalia. Uh, just a quick check if everyone is able to hear me. Um, thanks for the intro and welcome everyone to the meetup. Uh, I'm going to introduce myself briefly. Uh, so my name is Milos, uh, as Dalia mentioned, and I'm based out of Amsterdam, Netherlands. Um, I'm a part of Elastic for a bit more than a year and a half now, and uh, I work as an education engineer, which means that most of my time I'm spending teaching uh, students and users of uh, Elastic Stack on different topics, anything ranging from Elasticsearch itself and other parts of the stack, all the way up to different solutions that are based on the Elastic Stack. Uh, my background is in software engineering and I uh, used to work for different startup companies as uh, mostly, well, primarily developing APIs, microservices, and then moving a bit more into natural language processing and machine learning. So this is a brief intro. And uh, today's topic will be snapshot lifecycle management. So we're going to talk about this because generally when we work with data, safety and security is one of our biggest concerns. So of course, uh, especially in production environments, we do want to make sure that we don't lose the data. And of course, that no one uh, who shouldn't have access to it does not have access to any kind of sensitive information. And when we talk about safety and security, um, we often need to worry about a few different things. First of them being hardware failure. And uh, that, that is something that we can solve with data redundancy. Now, data redundancy, generally speaking, can be solved with RAID configurations, where we simply increase the number of disks or we increase the storage where we're going to uh, keep our data and store redundant copies of data in order to prevent any kind of hardware failures. Now, before we move on, I'm just going to emphasize that we're going to cover some basics here. We're going to do a brief intro on why do we even talk about snapshot lifecycle management. And then we're going to do one fairly long demo where we're going to see all of the capabilities. So when we talk about data redundancy, uh, in Elastic Stacks, more specifically Elasticsearch, data redundancy or high availability is implemented through software. So we can always talk about shards and primary and replica shards that are spread across multiple nodes. And this helps us sustain any kind of hardware failure. So in this given example here, if we look at uh, a cluster called My Cluster that contains three different nodes, we can see that we have one index here with three primary shards, which are noted by P0, P1, and P2. And then we have two copies or two replicas of these shards where each primary shard contains its own replica. If you look closely at each of the nodes, you will see that each node contains full index or full data set. So these sh shards are allowing us to create software high availability and sustain failure of multiple nodes and still have our data uh, secure and safe in terms of not losing any information. Now, while this is useful for preventing hardware failure, we still often are prone to human errors. And simple example is you can have as many replicas as you can, and you can have as many nodes inside of your cluster as you want but it's enough for someone who has admin access to issue a simple comment, delete, and then index name, and all of your production data can be lost. Okay, so simple saying delete index name production underscore data will get rid of everything that exists in all of those primary and replica shards. And this is something you don't want to sustain because you lose everything. So for that reason, you often think about backup options and backup and replicas in the context of Elastic Stack uh, are something, are two things that we need to do and want to do very often. 
And then when we talk about security, of course, it is a completely different game. So there we're not talking about preventing data to be lost, but of course it is very much connected to being prone to human errors. So who is going to have that access? Who is going to have permissions to be able to delete indices and so on? And this is not going to be the topic for today. It will be a topic for maybe another meetup. So one of the solutions is of course, elastic security. And uh, it is also a free solution in terms of it comes as a part of basic license, or at least some parts of elastic security come as a part of basic license. Uh, but today's focus will be on backup. And when we talk about backup in the context of Elasticsearch, we implement backup through a mechanism we call snapshot and restore mechanism. This mechanism allows us to create frequent snapshots or backups of our cluster, more specifically, all the data we have in our cluster. So all kind of data streams and indices, as well as cluster states. For the ones who are not too familiar with the cluster state, cluster state simply contains all of the information about our cluster, things such as how many nodes do we have inside, how many indices we have inside, um, where the shards of these indices are allocated. And then of course, any kind of templates or settings that we applied that are persistent settings. So the ones that are supposed to be stored somewhere and survive any kind of full cluster restarts. Snapshot and restore, a restore mechanism also supports various repositories. So the question arises, where do I actually keep my backup? And file system is going to be one of them, something that we're going to use for the purpose of today's demo. But of course, we also support the various cloud repositories such as S3, HDFS for Hadoop, uh, Azure storage or Google cloud storage as well. Uh, when we go through the steps, we're going to see how to register or pick these repositories and then how to start the whole process of taking the snapshots. We will be able to do this through two different methods. So API and Kibana. API is something that is always an option. So you can simply send HTTP requests to your Elasticsearch REST API and configure the repository, configure taking snapshots and configure that uh, snapshot lifecycle management policy that we're going to talk about. Kibana is another option. And I would argue definitely more intuitive in terms of being able to um, go through the UI, drag and drop items, select from the list, click buttons and implement everything in a few simple steps. The reason why I like doing demos is because you don't have to trust my word when I say a few simple steps, but we're actually going to go through this and you're going to see in a demo how simple it is to implement the backup and restore, a snapshot and restore mechanism. And uh, yeah, there are no, not really excuses not to do this uh, when it comes to protecting your data. Now, what are going to be the steps of doing that? We're going to register a repository and when we talk about file system storage, we will just have to register it and uh, define it inside of the config file. Uh, in terms of cloud storage, you do need to have the appropriate plugin installed. Now, this is only if you're maintaining your cluster yourself. If you're using Elasticsearch as a service, then of course you don't have to do these things. The plugins will be uh, automatically installed and not only that, but the snapshot lifecycle management policy that we're going to talk about is going to be implemented for you. So of course, this is geared towards users that uh, simply want to start a cluster and, key, and uh, start with indexing documents, reading. In case you want to manage your own cluster, then you have control of uh, when and how you're going to do this. After registering the repository, we're going to take a snapshot. We're going to take multiple snapshots to see what kind of uh, behavior we go through. And something that I'm going to mention here, which, which is a very important thing, is that these snapshots work in something we call incremental manner. That means that when you create first snapshot of your indices or complete cluster, uh, the data needs to be copied to the repository. So this initial snapshot will take a amount of time based on how big your cluster is, but every consecutive snapshot will only copy the difference of the data. 
So the time span or the frequency of creating these snapshots does not become a problem. If you want to do them every minute, as we're going to see in the demo, it's absolutely fine because every minute you will only need to copy or back up the delta of the data. So everything that happened in between previous snapshots and the moment when you initiated the request. If you want to do it every day, it's also perfectly fine. So everything that happened inside of that day will be, become a part of the snapshot. And then the last step is restoring a snapshot, which is something that you can do either on the same cluster or on the different cluster. Now, the difference here will of course be that if you do it on the same cluster, you will mostly want to um, take indices that are a part of your snapshots. And these indices will then be restored to your existing cluster. You can of course do the cluster state as well if you want. Uh, when we talk about different cluster, this is a scenario where you will, that you will often use if you want to either copy the data from one cluster to another or completely move one cluster to another. So oftentimes one of the possibilities. And then the last thing, which is of course the, the topic of this whole conversation and something that we always aim towards in, in Elastic is to automate processes. Um, snapshot lifecycle management is something that helps us automate this process. And it was uh, one of the most sought for features for, for a long time, simply because users love the fact they can do snapshots and restore, which was there since a long time ago. So Elastic Stack version 1.0, uh, which was six years ago. But um, of course, we don't, we don't like to do things manually. We don't want to create cron tabs to execute the, the, the script that will um, send requests to Elasticsearch. Or of course, there were some third party solutions. There still are, but it's always the best if you have everything integrated uh, inside of the product. And as you will see inside of Kibana, you will be able to do all of these things this is just one thing that we're going to see in the demo. So the process of registering a repository. Now in the demo itself, uh, you will only see shared file system and the read only URL. Uh, and then you will be prompted, we will be prompted to uh, install the plugins. So before we go to demo, uh, just a couple of quick things uh, with regards to snapshot lifecycle management. So it is available from version 7.6 of the Elastic Stack. And um, on top of things that you can regularly do with uh, snapshot and restore mechanism, uh, you can use snapshot lifecycle management to set snapshot frequency, to set snapshot retention. So very important thing in case you don't want to pay for additional storage. So we're going to do things such as keep these uh, snapshots for an amount of time and then delete them or at least keep a certain number of them always there. And then of course, choose what gets backed up. This is something you can do as a part of snapshot and restore in general, but you will see how simple it is when you use Kibana UI, where you can simply select uh, the indices you want to back up, or you can use an index pattern to match existing indices. So with that in mind, uh, let's move on to the demo. I'm just going to briefly stop sharing my screen and share it again here this time with a different desktop in mind. Uh, okay, perfect. So you should be able to see my Kibana instance now. And uh, we're going to start here with creating a repository. Now, by creating a repository, because we're going to use file uh, system or shared file system, we're simply going to go and create a folder inside of a local machine, in this case, my laptop. And we're going to assume that this repository is somewhere where we want to store backups. Now, of course, uh, you probably don't want to do this on the same server where you, where you are running Elasticsearch because then you're not really preventing any kind of hardware failures. This is going to be a separate destination that you will mount. But for the sake of this demo, we're just going to do it locally. So we simplify things. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm inside of my uh, terminal here, inside of Elasticsearch folder. Again, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to create 
a directory here and I'm going to name it uh, backup.repo. Again, I have to emphasize, we're not going to do this in, in real use cases. This is just a demo purpose. And this is now going to act as my uh, shared file system. Here I also have a node running and I also have my Kibana instance running. So I'm going to go back to this Kibana instance that you should be able to see right now. And this is Kibana uh, and generally, of course, the whole stack running on 7.9.1. So the latest version of the stack. And as you can see here also, a bit of a uh, bit of a uh, praise for Kibana team uh, since the previous version versions Kibana has also been uh, changed a lot in terms of improvements so now when you're switching from one application to another you're going to see a lot of um, faster responses and you won't need to wait for the actual application to load but before we go there, let's check where our snapshot and restore is. So we're going to scroll all the way down to stack management and we're going to choose there inside of data, snapshot and restore. When we open snapshot, snapshot and restore, we're going to see four tabs. We're going to see snapshot, repositories, policies and restore status. Now, even if you move to repositories or snapshots, you're first going to be prompted to register a repository. Restore status will show that there are no restored snapshots. And of course, you can go to snapshots to start the restore, but this will take you back to repositories. Similar situation with policies. So even though you're technically allowed to click on create a policy, you are going to get a warning to register a repository first. So let's cancel this and let's register our repository. Here we've got two options, shared file system and read only URL. Uh, in the slides before you also probably noticed uh, Azure, Google Cloud Storage, uh, S3 and HDFS. Of course, they will appear in case you have the appropriate plugin, plugins installed. We don't have the plugins installed here because we're not going to use them. So uh, we're only going to work with shared file system. Now, first I'm going to name my repository name. I'm going to name it my local, uh, which is my local repo. And I am going to choose shared file system. This is now selected. There is another option here called source only snapshots. Now, without digging too deep into how Elasticsearch works, um, when you have indices, these indices, of course, contain source data, so original data that you indexed, as well as uh, internal data structures created by Elasticsearch in order to provide querying aggregations and so on. Things such as inverted index, stock values, etc. So what you can do is you can toggle the switch on and you can say, I only want to create source only snapshots, which will create the backup of your original documents or source documents without touching those inverted indices or doc values. Uh, that, that will save storage. So up to 50% of less space will be taken by your snapshot compared to the actual size on the disk for your indices. But when you restore these snapshots, you will have to re-index the data in order to recreate those data structures again. In our case, we're going to um, snapshot the whole index or of course uh, everything, including source and data structures. And now we need to choose file system location. Now here we get warned as well that the location must be registered in the path.repo setting on all master and data nodes. So before we add the location, let's go and do exactly that. I'm going to go back to my Elasticsearch folder. And here I'm going to choose to edit my Elasticsearch.yaml file. So config Elasticsearch.yaml. Here is my YAML file where I change everything related to Elasticsearch instance. I'm going to jump to the end of the file and I'm going to insert here path.data for my current repository. One thing before we go there, let's make sure that we have the appropriate path. So I'm going to quit for a second and I'm going to check where I currently am. So users, 
Monday, which is my surname, downloads, Elasticsearch. Okay, I'm going to copy this whole thing. And then I'm going to go back to Vim and insert here path.repo and provide the full address. So path.repo colon, and I'm going to say users all the way. And then what was the one that I used? Backup underscore repo. Okay, so this should suffice. Now, of course, again, here for the sake of uh, demonstration, we're using one node cluster. In your production environment, you will have to go to every master and data node and do this, um, ideally using some sort of configuration management tool. So as soon as you scale to a certain number of nodes, you will definitely not go every single time to config and change everything uh, in a node. So maybe you're going to use Ansible or Chef or Puppet to uh, automate this whole process. Now, again, every time when we change configs in Elasticsearch, we have to restart the node. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop my nodes and I'm going to run it again. So let's wait a few moments to make sure the node is up and running, that Kibana is able again to connect to this node, and then we can proceed with registering our repository. Okay, this uh, seems to be okay. Let's look at our Kibana here for a moment. As soon as uh, Zoom allows me to click on the tab. Uh, Kibana seems to be fine as well. Okay, so let's go back and check that. So now I can go and add the path to my file system location. So here I'm going to do the same users, the Amandage downloads Elasticsearch, and then backup repo. Okay. Uh, perfect. Snapshot compression. We're going to leave that as it is. Chunk size as well. So this is something that you might want to change in case you, you actually do uh, production snapshots and set the, the biggest chunk for a um, file of a snapshot. Max snapshot per bytes. So we're not going to do any kind of throttles. Uh, again, in production environment, you might want to adjust these uh, by saying, okay, for me, it's not necessary to create a snapshot as fast as possible at the price of maybe using too much or too many resources for my cluster. So I'm going to throttle the speed of creating these snapshots and not put additional stress on my uh, cluster. So let me go and register this. And as soon as I clicked on the button, I have my local repo here. And now the moment of truth, let's see if we can verify this repository, click the button, verify, and it seems that it's connected. So now our repository is connected to uh, Elasticsearch. And of course, through Kibana here, we can access it. So I'm going to close this now. And here it is my repository, my local repo. Now let's go and check which kind of indices we have inside of our cluster here. So I'm going to go quickly to stack management and open oh, apologies for a second. No need for that. I'm just going to go directly to dev tools and I'm going to issue a command get underscore cat slash indices. And these are all of the indices we currently have in our cluster. So things such as system indices, starting with dot for monitoring, uh, and then some Apache logs, messages from different applications, internal system indices for Kibana, and so on. What is going to be of interest to us is this index called blocks. So let's say this is our production index here, as it is actually, and we're using it to publish blogs about different things we like to write about. So this index contains one primary shard and one replica and a total of close to 1600 documents. I picked this one simply because it has only 5.4 megabytes. So we can do it as a part of the demo, but of course you can do again, a snapshot of all of your indices inside of the cluster. 
So let's go back to snapshot and restore, stack management, snapshot and restore. And now I can go and create a policy. My repository is here. I can click on policy and create a policy. Even if you go to snapshots again, Kibana is very intuitive. So it tells you, well, create a policy first and then you can go and create snapshots. This is of course, if you use the UI, you can still directly create a snapshot through the API without um, having to create in the um, snapshot lifecycle management policy. But here we're going to focus on the policy. So we're going to start with policy name. So again, Kibana is conveniently guiding us through the steps. So I'm going to set this policy name to be test dash snapshots. And now I can set the snapshot name. Now, Elasticsearch will automatically add unique identifier to each name, of course, to differentiate snapshots from each other, but it can also use date math expression uh, to make it convenient for you as a user to understand when the snapshot was made. So here I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to name this as test snapshots. And then I'm going to use date math to say, just tell me what is the current time and day. Okay, repository, as you can see here, well, we're going to move this to the side or to the bottom, my local repo. So the only repository that is registered, I, of course I can jump to repositories and uh, add additional ones if I want to. And then schedule, how often do I want Elasticsearch to take snapshots for me? Of course, depending on your needs, you're going to change that from every day or week or hour or minute. But remember that because they're incremental, you're not really losing anything in terms of performance. So here, let's do the following. Let's schedule them every minute so we see how they actually get generated. You can do that through cron expression as well, if that's your preference, or through simple basic interval, so every minute. Once I choose every minute here, the cron expression is created for me anyways. Okay, now I can, <laughs> I need to keep, oh, maybe I can minimize it completely. Yes, much better. Okay, so now I can go and click on next. And what do I want to now snapshot? Data streams and indices set to on or toggle switch set to on, which means that all of the data streams and indices, including system indices are going to be included as a part of this snapshot. This is default behavior simply because you should be taking a backup of everything as long as you can afford it, afford it of course, in terms of storage. But here again, for the sake of the demo, I'm going to say, well, I don't really need the backup of everything. So I can either select or deselect specific indices currently 66 of them. So I can deselect all and then choose at least one of them. They're also sorted. So I can just scroll down until I get to blogs or I can use index patterns and say, well, actually let me just do blogs and that's it. Okay, so only blogs index are going to be included as a part of that snapshot. We have a couple more settings include, include unavailable indices. So in case any indices are not available in the cluster. Uh, if we leave this as off, the snapshot taking is going to fail. But if we set it as on, these are simply going to be ignored and the snapshot will not fail. Allow partial indices means that if primary shards of any index that you want to take a snapshot of is not available, again, everything fails in terms of taking the snapshot, but you can also decide to say, well, even if the primary shards are not available, still keep doing the operation. We're going to keep these two as they are. And then include global state is what we mentioned before in terms of the cluster state. I'm going to include cluster state and blocks index. I move on to the next step. And now this is snapshot retention. So snapshots are going to be taken every minute, but for me now, this is not a problem because the snapshot might take five megabytes because of the small size of an index. But of course, when you're talking about production environment, maybe your snapshots are going to consume gigabytes every five minutes. So of course you don't want to keep them indefinitely. So you can just say, delete them after 
20 days. But here let's use, of course, much shorter time span. Uh, so let's say delete them after two hours. I don't need them afterwards. And then minimum count says the following. Even if they expire, I want to have always at least three snapshots. So even if after two hours, uh, you're supposed to delete them because of the expiration, Elasticsearch is supposed to delete them, I still keep the three of them at least and the three most recent ones. Maximum count, let's say we do 20 and we can put minimum count 10. So maximum count simply means, okay, if you keep creating snapshots and you have more than 20 and they didn't expire because they, we created them within two hours, still delete them because you reached the maximum count. Okay, and now when we click on next, we'll, we're going to review this policy. So policy name is fine, snapshot name is fine, repository is fine, schedule is fine. We only want to snapshot blogs. We want to include cluster state and everything seems okay. So I'm going to create this policy and policy is immediately created. We can close this window and we can now see repository and policies. Now this policy is going to work in such a way that snapshot will be triggered every minute. If I go to snapshots here, I'm not going to see any snapshots yet, but of course I'm allowed to trigger this policy myself on the go. And the reasons can be multiple. Uh, first, maybe I need to test it now. Or second reason is you're doing some maintenance in your cluster and you want to do snapshot just before the maintenance starts. So you don't need to, um, you don't need to wait for the actual snapshots to be taken. So let me go back to snapshots here and you can see that already the first one has been created automatically. I didn't click on this run now. Snapshot is created, test snapshots 2020-09-09 and then unique identifier. I can click on the snapshot and I can see nothing failed, version that I'm running on, UUID, snapshot complete, include global state, indices, start time and so on and so on. Okay, I'm going to go and create one myself. So let me run this policy now. I'm running the policy, going to snapshots. Now I have two snapshots. Remember they're incremental. So when the first one happens, data for blocks index was copied. And now every consecutive uh, snapshot is only going to copy the difference of the data. Now, of course, here we're not actively indexing. so we're not going to copy any data with regards to index, but cluster state gets uh, updated as we create these snapshots. Now we can give it a few moments here, maybe to wait for another snapshot to happen. And here it is, another snapshot happened one minute past. So we can just see how these not snapshots are getting created and so on. Let's do one more thing, just from a technical perspective. I want to show you what you can find in the folder itself. So this is my backup repo or the repository where the snapshots are stored. So let me open that uh, backup repo. And here's what I find inside. So we've got snap dr7, snap gvn, snap u63. So snapshots that are being taken are uh, stored inside of this uh, repository as well as metadata about these particular snapshots and then indices and so on. So everything is stored inside of this repository. And now I'm going to go back. Probably by now we have another snapshot so I can reload it. Yes, now we have four. So as you can see, they keep getting created every minute. Okay, let's do one more thing. Let's actually see how we can use these snapshots and how easy it is to restore. So I'm going to take a leap of faith now and I'm going to go to my dev tools here and execute this request again. So my index blogs is here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just get rid of it. I'm going to delete it by issuing a command delete blogs. Okay. 
and we run this acknowledged true and now I'm going to check it again it's not there so how do we fix this problem now the data is gone so I'm going to go to stack management I'm going to choose snapshot and restore and I'm simply going to pick any of these snapshots of course if I take the first one, I will restore the data as it was a few minutes ago. If I take the last one, I'm going to restore the data um, as it was when the snapshot was taken. So yeah, let's pick any. We have this button here, so I can go and delete snapshots, but I can also go and restore from a snapshot. So I'm going to click on restore here. And this now takes me to a prompt of what do I want to restore? So all data streams and indices, including system indices. In this case, this is of course only blogs index, so I can keep it on. Rename data streams and indices. So in case I want to restore from a backup inside of my cluster, but then I want these indices to be renamed so they don't overwrite existing indices, I can set up a pattern and say everything that is blogs inside of my snapshot, restore it as blogs underscore restored. I don't want to do that because I don't have blogs index. And then partial restore and restore global state. These are also off by default. So we don't want to restore global states uh, by default, but of course we can toggle the switch on. So I want to go next now. I don't want to modify any index settings, although you can do that as well. So you can provide uh, number of replicas that you want to create and so on. And then I can go and click on next here and restore snapshots. Okay, restore status complete. Index blogs, I can click on it. I can double check it took one second uh, from repository, my local repo, target host, local host where my node one lives and Everything seems to be fine, but let's go and double check that, of course, by going to DevTools and checking indices. And thankfully, our blogs index is there. So we can go and also do get blogs to check if everything's fine in terms of mappings or do a simple search request and make sure that the documents are still there. Now, of course, by now, you're going to notice that inside of Snapshot and Restore, we probably have a few more uh, snapshots being created. And you're going to notice another interesting thing. Uh, due to the fact that we didn't have blogs index for a while, and that index was the one that was supposed to be included as a part of the snapshot, we have a bit of a gap here. So from 638 until 641, we didn't have any snapshots. That's because simply snapshots were failing because index was not available. So for those three minutes, we didn't create any snapshots, but as soon as the index is retrieved, we keep creating snapshots um, as a part of this policy. Now, of course, you can go and delete manually snapshots and that will not cause any of the of other snapshots to fail. So this deletion policy is smart as well. Uh, despite the fact that I said that snapshots are incremental, you can freely delete them and internal mechanism will decide if it needs to delete any data with the snapshot or not at all. Okay, um, so this was a brief talk and brief demo about snapshot, snapshot uh, lifecycle management. So I'm going to now go back to my slides here. Um, and yeah, this is, well, let's see how this is going to work. I think I need to enable. Okay, so this was all for me in terms of uh, demo and the presentation. So now we're open for questions. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here for a second. I believe uh, Dahlia will either help us with the questions or I can just look into. Yeah, awesome.
let's see what questions do we have here. Oh, yeah, we have chat here. Chat here. Right. Uh, so question from Hane, how to back up config info? Uh, very good question. So I'm assuming you're referring to Elasticsearch YAML file because this is a file, it will not be included as a part of snapshot. So this is something that you need to do manually. Um, ideally, what we recommend you to do is not to keep that config file inside of Elasticsearch folder. So when you start your first cluster, uh, move both config files out of the folder as well as data. So data itself for Elasticsearch should also be outside of the Elasticsearch folder in case anyone deletes Elasticsearch or something fails during the update. So you do need to take care of that manually. Um, but every kind of cluster setting that was uh, executed through the API will be stored in the cluster states and it will be included as a part of that cluster states. Hope that answer is on your question. Not sure if it's the answer you, you expected or hoped for, but yeah, it is something you need to do manually. Um, I'm curious now I can finally see the, the number of participants. So we've got nine people here. Uh, yeah, please shoot for any questions. Uh, I'm sure this is something that is interesting, at least to some of you. I know that uh, our users were very happy seeing that we now added this as a part of Kibana because finally there's no need for any third party solutions. You can just do everything from one single console. So yeah, let's let's do a few seconds of, of awkward silence and uh, <laughs> um, I if, can uh, link you to our uh, survey, by the way. Can you please uh, fill it out? It's going to help us determine what topics you want to hear in the future and if you like the meetup, um, etc. It only takes literally 30 seconds. So um, if you can please fill it out and yeah, we can we can stay longer for questions, Miloš, if you have time. <laughs> No, yeah, it's absolutely it's absolutely fine. If you, if you don't have questions, that means I did my uh, talk fairly well. Uh, okay, we've got someone raising their hand, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't know how we how we handle that. Do we, Talia? I'm not seeing it. Or though. maybe I don't. I yeah, maybe it was just a mistake. Yeah. yeah, that was that small glimpse of hope that someone has another <laughs> question. <laughs> But I can contact you, right, after afterwards if um, they come up with something. Yeah, of course. Okay, so uh, thanks everyone for joining, for listening to this. I hope you enjoyed. I hope uh, it helped you understand stuff and uh, give you motivation to do backups, not necessarily just with Elasticsearch, but in general. Uh, so yeah, that's all from me, Dalia. Thanks as well for Thank organizing you. Thank this. You, Thank you, Thanks, course. everyone. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.